In today's video, we're going to be discussing some shocking conspiracy theories that involve the food and drink industries. Now, some of these theories include a form of population control, nicotine in our coffee, and one of the most disturbing videos I have ever seen in my life. So strap in and let's get right into it. It's a real thing. Wouldn't a nice cold Coke taste great now? So our first theory is one that absolutely shocked me and I just couldn't believe that I had never heard of it before. And that's the theory surrounding the once popular soda, Tropical Fantasy. And this is a two-parter, so get ready. So I want you to picture this. Coca-Cola was incredibly popular back in the 90s and for many years before that and many years after that, obviously. I mean, everybody loved drinking them. And for the first 70 years of Coca-Cola's existence, you could get a Coke for five cents. That's right, 70 years the price stayed the same. I mean, that is a freaking steal, and that's not going to break anybody's bank. Well, maybe mine. F in the chat. But something happened in the dawn of the 1960s. The price of Coca-Cola started going up, and it continuously went up for the next 30 years until the price reached almost a dollar. Now, in the 90s, that wasn't a ton of money, obviously, but it still was significantly more expensive than people were used to buying it at. And because of this, people who didn't make a lot of money were finding it harder and harder to drink their Coca-Cola. So people were basically kind of forced at this point to cut pop out of their diet, which, if we're being honest, is probably a good thing. That was until an unlikely hero came along. A drink by the name of Tropical Fantasy was released to the public and it tasted pretty much just like Coca-Cola, except it was just 49 cents. So it's basically half the price of Coca-Cola. So this drink was now allowing people who lived in poorer communities the chance to get their soda fix. And honestly, I'm sure that this made a lot of people happy. And the numbers kind of speak for themselves. Tropical Fantasy was an instant hit and hundreds of thousands of people were buying these drinks. And the world lived happily ever after. Not. As quickly as Tropical Fantasy came, it was quickly surrounded in a horrifying conspiracy theory. One that left this company that was destined for the top crashing back down to earth. The theory was that this Tropical Fantasy drink contained some type of chemical that lowered sperm counts in males who drank their product. And what makes this even more terrifying is that this was a product that was geared and promoted directly towards African Americans. These drinks were apparently almost primarily sold in African American neighborhoods and were promoted most heavily to African American teenagers who would soon be reaching the age where they would be having children. And so the theory became that this drink was actually sterilizing African American men on purpose. And the theory grew like wildfire and eventually people started to believe that the KKK was behind this drink. Tropical Fantasy was ravaged by this rumor and their sales dropped by 70%. 70%, that is crazy. And now I'm left wondering, if this theory is true, then why would this company do this? I mean, I get that there are some racist trash people out there, but how racist do you gotta be to start a soda company? That is like, next level. But unfortunately, people do horrible things in the name of racism all the time. And though the situation is extreme, it's still possible that it was done strictly because of racist feelings. I mean, it's so fucked up and it's so dark, but there is a motive there for some horrible people to do this. So we have a motive, but is the conspiracy theory actually true? I don't think so. From everything that I've read on this theory, it seems to have been totally debunked by this point. I couldn't find any numbers that showed any increase in male infertility at the time, or even any other stats along those lines. So it seems like this whole conspiracy theory was just made up, which if that's true, uh, damn. That's, I kind of feel bad for Tropical Fantasy. F in the chat, part two. Oh, and speaking of part twos, I told you this was a two-parter, right? So if this conspiracy theory was completely made up, then who made it up? Well, Tropical Fantasy looked good at first. While all the other soda brands were increasing their prices, Tropical Fantasy came out of nowhere with these steaming hot deals. And like I said, this company grew very quickly and at the rate that they were going, they very well could have became a top competitor in the soda industry. But after just a year of production, pamphlets were passed out all throughout New York City warning people of the causes that Tropical Fantasy could have on your sperm count. And people just believed these pamphlets without doing any sort of research, 
which I guess is kind of understandable because, you know, they didn't have phones back then, so it was harder to do research like that. But people just believed these pamphlets, which were not based in fact at all. So who put the pamphlets there? Well, maybe it was the good old folks over at Coca-Cola or Pepsi, or maybe even both. I mean, we could be talking about the collaboration of the century here. And holy shit, it makes way too much sense. They could have put these pamphlets out there to sabotage this new and up and coming soda brand because Tropical Fantasy was taking over the market at the time. And if they really did put those pamphlets there, then oh my God, they destroyed the competition because Tropical Fantasy is basically not much of anything at this point. So just looking at who benefited off of these pamphlets the most, I think it might be clear that some of these big soda companies may have been behind this entire conspiracy theory, which is like a conspiracy theory inside of a conspiracy theory now. So this is just, this is heavy stuff. So I'll admit it, I eat at chain restaurants more than the average person should. I love my Outback Steakhouse and I love my chilies and damn it, I am proud. And I've been going to the Outback Steakhouse since I was a fetus. And one of the only real big changes that I can remember happening to this restaurant was the inclusion of those little kiosk things at the side of the table. The actual company that supplies them there is called Ziosk. And they're like a little thing where you can just quickly pay and maybe even play some games if you want to. And these things are at virtually every chain restaurant now, it seems. But in my experience, they don't really do much. Most of the time when I'm at places at like Olive Garden, Red Robin, Outback Steakhouse, as I mentioned before, most of the times the servers would just bring me my check and I'll pay with the server. And I would say the majority of the time, I don't even notice that it's there. So very rarely do I ever actually pay on these machines. And let's be honest, nobody is playing those damn games. It seems like it's just something that kind of takes up space at this point. And I swear to God, I have been to restaurants where these things aren't even on. They're just sitting on the table, but they're completely shut off. So I've always wondered, why are these things still being used? There's not really a point to them, right? So I was at Chili's earlier today and I was thinking about this. I'm like, why are these things still being used? And that's when I noticed something. These Ziosks have cameras in them. There is no way that you can tell me that that is not a camera. And I scrolled through all the apps and there is not a single one that allows you to use this camera. There's not a single app that implements the camera. The camera seemingly can't be used for anything. So why is it on there? Well, that's our next theory. The theory is that these restaurant companies use these little Ziosk things to spy on their customers. And maybe this is to gain feedback on the food or the menu or on anything really. Or maybe it's even to assure that the server is doing a good job. I don't know what the motives are. And I could also totally see these machines having some kind of microphone in them. Though I can't confirm that, I could totally see that being a possibility. It really wouldn't be hard to get away with. And this is certainly problematic considering all the personal conversations that are had over dinner. I mean, I have said some dumb shit while I'm out to eat. I do not want other people knowing what I'm saying. Also, I look very ugly when I eat. It is not a pretty sight while I'm out eating at Red Robin. Let me just say that. So I did some research, as I always try and do, and holy shit, these actually are cameras. These machines actually have cameras in them. And the company Ziosk actually responded and said that the company does not save or share information from the camera without the user's permission. But that makes no sense. If they're not using it to spy on us, then why would they put all the money into putting a camera in every single one of these machines? The customer can't use them. What other reason would there be cameras in there? Please, I am all ears, seriously. So the next time you're horfing down a burger at your local friendlies, just maybe, maybe turn the Ziosk away because you never know who's watching. So here in Buffalo, New York, Tim Hortons is quite literally a drug. It is on the same level as I would say crack cocaine, um, and everybody here loves it, including me. And if you've ever gotten Tim Hortons coffee, you know that that just it hits a little bit differently. It is quite honestly the best coffee that I've ever had, and I will stand by that, and I will actually physically fight anyone who says otherwise, maybe to the point of death. And it's funny because since I was a kid, I've heard all sorts of speculation as to why this coffee tastes so good. And it's interesting because my dad even bought the coffee grinds from Tim Hortons, but they just don't taste the same at home. You gotta go to Tim Hortons and get the good stuff there. So what is it about this Tim Hortons coffee that just tastes so good? I mean, it's addicting. Well, maybe it actually is. I can't tell you how many times I've heard this, but there's always been a conspiracy theory that Tim Hortons uses nicotine in their coffee. And that's why people are so obsessed with it and people are so addicted to it. 
I mean, speaking from experience, the stuff really is addicting. Like, it's very strange. I know it sounds strange if you've never had it before, but it is addicting. But after doing some research, I was shocked to see that this has really become a full-blown conspiracy theory. Like, people really take this seriously now. And it's so popular that Tim Hortons dedicated a section of their website to try and disprove this theory. Which, holy shit, that, that is the funniest thing I've ever heard. And that is very real. That is real. Go on the website and check. It's crazy. So it seems like the popular belief with this theory is that Tim Hortons uses just below the legal limit of nicotine in their drinks to slightly get people hooked, but in a way that's legal. Which the conspiracy theorist in me absolutely loves, and it sounds so cool, it sounds like an, an amazing theory, it really does. But it makes no sense. And that is because there is no legal nicotine amount that can be added to any food or drinks here in the United States and Canada. It is simply not allowed. Also, there have been many private tests that have been run that have confirmed that no, Tim Hortons does not actually contain nicotine. So unfortunately, this theory is not true. And the legend of why Tim Hortons coffee tastes so good will probably remain a mystery forever. Actually, there's probably no mystery to it. It's probably just good. I don't know. It's probably high quality or something. I don't know. Sorry for the quick costume change. Uh, actually, my audio didn't record for these last two conspiracy theories, so I have to refilm them. Um, I hate my life. So it's no secret that vegetarians and vegans are often the butt of many jokes in our society today. I mean, I for one am guilty of throwing around some chirps at my vegan friends. But honestly, I have no real issue with people who are vegetarian or vegan. I mean, their reasons are very understandable and honestly very admirable if you really think about it. I mean, I think many of us would disagree with the animal cruelty used in the meat industry. But the issue that most people have with vegetarians and vegans is that a lot of the times they are very extreme and in your face about their beliefs. And I think this has rubbed a lot of people the wrong way, including myself. But I know so many people who are vegetarian and vegan and none of them are really like that. I mean, yes, a lot of them are passionate about animal cruelty, but they're not really in your face about it and they're nowhere near the point of being extremists. And yet so many people in our society view anyone who is vegan as a nut job. And looking into why people view them as such, I think the finger obviously points to one organization, PETA. Listen, PETA is crazy. I mean, they take their messages and their points way, way too far to the point where I want to disagree with them. I mean, it seems like PETA is really purposefully trying to be over the top and overly extreme, but in the end, it really just turns people away from the message that they're supposedly trying to get out. And I'll be honest, a lot of the times the message is good and it's something that I could honestly see myself getting behind, but they just have the worst way of going about it. And this plays into our fourth theory. The theory is that PETA was started by the big meat industry in order to label all vegetarians and vegans as extremists and crazy. And this actually makes sense because with these crazy advertisements, PETA is basically painting everyone who disagrees with the meat industry out to be mentally unstable. I mean, it really seems like with every advertisement, with every promotion they have, with every campaign, that they're trying to contradict the actual message that they're putting out because of the mind-boggling ways that they go about promoting it. And I really think that PETA as an organization is actually helping the meat industry out because it's keeping people away from going vegan. I mean, my own brother is vegan, and when he told that to my family, they roasted him into oblivion. And yet there's really nothing wrong with being vegan. It's just everyone in my family has seen these PETA ads and assumed that all vegetarians and all vegans are like that. And it's funny because the majority of vegans and vegetarians don't even agree with the campaigns that PETA is putting out. Let's take a look at some of the PETA advertisements throughout the year. This is the one that I was like, okay, PETA, you're probably trolling with this one, but they weren't. <laughs> Stop using anti-animal language. Instead of kill two birds with one stone, say feed two birds with one scone. Instead of saying be the guinea pig, say be the test tube. This can't be real. I mean, it just makes anyone who's vegan or vegetarian look like a complete idiot. Bring home the bacon. <laughs> Bring home the bagels. <laughs> I, I kind of like that one. I'm going to start saying that. I could totally see the meat industry viewing veganism as a major issue for their companies. And so they found a way to turn people off from it by making a company that puts out stuff like this. I mean, so for all these reasons, I think this theory is possible. 
So recently on Twitter, I stumbled upon this video with the caption being, is your food fake or real? Find out with these easy tests at home. Obviously I was intrigued and I decided to watch a little bit of the video. And I got through like half of it when I realized I need to watch this with you guys because honestly it was scaring the hell out of me. I was literally speechless when I watched this. Stop. So instantly I'm shook. Why am I shook? Because I eat processed cheese all the time. And that shit just is unnatural. I mean, that is crazy. So I had to look this up to see if this part was actually real. And what I found was crazy. There are hundreds of videos out there of people doing the same exact thing. And the processed cheese doesn't melt. The Kraft American singles. Your boy eats those up. That is so, so messed up. But this Twitter video showed much more than just this cheese. There is plastic in our rice. What? What the fuck? I eat white rice every week. And it makes me wonder if the rice that I'm eating has plastic bits in it too. By the way, if you guys want me to test these out, let me know and I will do a follow-up video where I just test out all of these. Because this is, this is very interesting stuff to me. Ground up rocks? Putting rocks in the baby food? Hold on, I need to look this up. Oh, this is true. Consumer reports tested for heavy metals, including lead, cadmium, and inorganic arsenic, and say they found at least one of these metals in all of the samples. This is a legitimate thing. I have no idea why a company would do that, but that seems dangerous for a little tiny baby to be consuming this stuff. Oh my God, this is a theory in and of itself. I, I don't wanna get too deep into this because I don't wanna get taken out, but holy crap. Did they say glue? Did that just say glue? Now I'm a little sussed out. There's no way. What the fuck is meat glue? What is meat glue? The industry-wide secret butchers don't want you to know about. Major suppliers have been caught using a special product known as meat glue to stick together scraps of meat to sell as prime cuts. Why? Meat glue is a real thing. Oh my god, I just had steak last night. Oh my god. That is gross. They take the leftover bits and literally glue them together. That cannot be healthy. Oh my god. Okay guys, I need to stop before I literally have a heart attack here. But this video really has me shook right now. And what I kind of want to do is go into my kitchen and see if any of the foods that I'm eating can be applied to these crazy videos. If you guys want to see me test these out, then I gladly will. But oh my god, what is really in our foods? I need to go cry for a little bit. Thank you guys so much for watching the video and I will see you very soon with the next one.